Chris Madden and Ricky Thornton Jr. debuted this past weekend, but are their situations temporary? We'll talk about that along with a broader look at the late model silly season and much more. Let's go. It's Monday, August 12th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily presented by Kubota Genuine Parts. Imagine a world where your Kubota equipment just runs like clockwork, where breakdowns are a distant memory and you're free to focus on what matters most, getting the job done. Introducing the Orange Protection Program, the ultimate service program designed to keep your equipment performing at its best. With Orange Protection, you'll enjoy priority service scheduling, extended warranty coverage, and access to a network of certified Kubota technicians who know your equipment inside and out. But that's not all. You'll also receive regular maintenance checks to prevent breakdowns, extended hours of operation, and loaner equipment availability because they know downtime is costly. Don't let maintenance get in the way of progress. Choose Orange Protection for your Kubota equipment and take control of your operations. Contact your local Kubota dealer today to learn more. Kubota built for the tough stuff and with Orange Protection, you're unstoppable. Big thanks to Kubota for their ongoing support of The Daily Show. This past weekend at Florence Speedway was the debut of this new look Kohler Motorsports team behind Ricky Thornton Jr. with Chris Madden, the new crew chief and crew guys, Ricky, Ar uh, Ricky Arnold and DJ Williams. RTJ bagged a Thursday night prelim win. He finished second Friday in his other prelim and then ended up eighth in the big show on Saturday. The team did end up in the hot pit at one point and wasn't really in contention for the win, but I'd say a solid first weekend out. In a story over at Dirt on Dirt with Kevin Kovac, Madden revealed they were hard at it leading into the North-South 100 weekend, getting everything ready. And that included putting together a new Longhorn chassis, getting a backup car ready, and completely outfitting a new truck and trailer. There's still a significant amount of work to do this week, and the team is back at the shop in North Carolina to finish up before they head to Arkansas for the topless 100. Now you can check out Kovac's story today over at DirtOnDirt.com. I would definitely recommend doing that. Kovac always writes really detailed stories, lots of information in there, so uh, definitely big recommend for that one. With RTJ's sizable championship lead, though, this team can afford to take some time to find their footing as this SSI to Kohler transition continues for Thornton. We're down to the last few events before the chase cut off with just Batesville, Port Royal, Portsmouth, Tyler County, and the late model Knoxville Nationals left before the playoffs start. Brownstown towards the end of September is the first Lucas Chase weekend uh, that the season, uh, you know, this is a multi-race affair this season, unlike last year's kind of winner take all finale at Eldora. As we've documented all season, there's been quite a bit of turmoil and ride changing at the top of dirt late model racing this season which started with Hudson O'Neill departing the Rocket House car post Speed Weeks and Tim McCready taking that over. O'Neill then ran his own team for a hot minute before replacing Ricky Thornton Jr. at SSI, RTJ then finding this home at Kohler for the remainder of 2024. Friends in the late model pit area, though, keep telling me that we are not done yet with ride swapping and that the next few months could be just as crazy as those we've already seen this season. Some top drivers and top crew members are in play. There could and likely will be more chassis shenanigans and swaps. And the game of musical chairs is being played in earnest as we speak. And you see a little bit of a view of that uncertainty near the bottom of Kovac's story about Madden. In that piece, he wrote, quote, Madden and Thornton were reluctant to discuss plans beyond 2024, unquote. We know that RTJ will be with the team through the end of the season as they try and win this Lucas Championship. And that is the plan for Madden as well. What happens for both in 2025, though, is still unclear. You'd have to think that if things go well through the end of the year, RTJ would seriously consider staying here. And the way the quotes from RTJ to Kovac read to me is that some of the uncertainty about the future might be a bit more directed towards Madden and his own plans than necessarily RTJ. So RTJ could already be thinking that his future is going to lie with Kohler. And looking around the rest of the sport, you know, top of the sport, and this is just mostly speculation on my part, but you have to wonder what the future holds for the Rocket House car. McCready has been really solid in the one, but T-Mac isn't getting any younger. They have yet to find Victory Lane, and I, I don't think that's a small thing. And this is a car and team that is used to taking down big scores and competing for championships. McCready is inside the Lucas Chase right now and could end up being the guy on a longer term basis here if they can make a real run at the title and pick up some wins. His consistency remains his big strength and it's nice to have that stability. 
But I have heard rumblings of Mark Richards having conversations with other drivers and have been sent some pretty wild rumors about this car. I usually ignore one or two messages, but when you get it from multiple different places, it kind of makes you sit up and pay attention a little bit more. The initial announcement about McCready joining Rocket only really references this season, and as we've seen, these deals can change really quickly. Not saying a change will happen for next year, but this is one of those situations where if the driver stayed, I wouldn't be surprised, but it also wouldn't shock me if there was another you know, driver in the seat here, especially with the way this year has gone. And then from there, I've been told there are some other top 25 drivers and well-known crew members that could be in play for changes for next season. It's been a fairly unprecedented year for driver changes, and when you have some of the seismic moves we've seen, it's going to create a domino effect that will mean changes for drivers and teams you didn't initially see coming. I think that's where we are right now. And I think you're going to start getting some more leaks, some more rumors, some more rumblings. You know, some of these online places, Facebook, Twitter, you know, some of the message boards, you're going to start seeing more of those things popping out. The Lucas season is going to be done here by about mid-October, and then the Outlaws finish just a few weeks later. I would bet we won't have to wait that long for the 2025 picture to become a lot clearer here in Dirt Late Model Racing. One more note about Ricky Thornton Jr. He is making his Pavement Midget debut on Wednesday at IRP. He posted a cryptic photo to his Twitter account a few days ago, but then revealed in the uh, replies that he'll be at IRP this week. This will be the third of four midget events at IRP this season, and other names expected to race that you might recognize from dirt racing include Kaylee Bryson, uh, Sammy Swindell, and Jerry Coons Jr. Also racing will be Bobby Santos and Cody Swanson. RTJ has made a few dirt midget appearances in 2024, including at the Chili Bowl and just a few weeks ago driving for Keith Coons. He's also a regular micro sprint competitor as well. I don't know of any streaming options for that IRP show, but uh, the tickets to get in, the general admission tickets, not that expensive. So if you're in the area, maybe check that one out. In New York, starting tonight, the Super Dirt Car Series was supposed to begin a three-race week, which is their third annual Summer Fast. Unfortunately, though, tonight at Brewerton is already rained out. They will try again uh, Atlanta Legends tomorrow with Fulton scheduled for Wednesday. Each race coming up is $7,500 to win, and there will be a Summer Fast champion crowned at the end. Matt Shepard, the overall Super Dirt Car Series championship leader right now, with Matt Williamson 27 points back. Jimmy Phelps, Tim Sears, and Anthony Perigo all still remain within striking distance. Through nine events, Williamson leads all drivers with three victories. The other driver with multiple wins this season uh, is Stuart Friesen. He will also be in attendance this week, along with all of the SDS regulars and a full complement of local and regional guys. That is, once they finally hit the racetrack. We'll call that good for today. Make sure to stop by dirttracker.com to check out all of the latest news and press from around dirt racing. And while you're there, sign up for our free email newsletter, The Slider, and check out the free analytics section. Hope you guys have a great Monday out there. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.